Hello, dear viewer. Welcome to my channel. If you're unfamiliar with me, I'm Sarah Venza. I have been speedrunning Fable 1 since 2015, um, with a few off and on breaks here and there, but it's been mostly consistent since then. Um, this video, if you didn't see the title, or if you were brought here by the YouTube algorithm or whatever, is going to be a 100% uh, speedrun of Fable the Lost Chapters. Now, 100% um, is not exactly the easiest thing to define, because there is no in-game 100% tracker like you would find in some other games. So we as a community have had to come up with our own definition for it. And we have felt that the things that would most represent it would include all 54 gold, silver, and bronze quests, collecting all legendary weapons, I forget exactly how many, but in this includes the um, frying pan with augmentation slots and Orcon's Club. We are also going to be collecting all 30 silver keys, opening all 12 silver key chests, opening and looting all of the major contents of the demon doors, and we are also going to be getting every trophy, as there are some tro there are two trophies that are not gotten from completing quests necessarily. It gets a little bit weird in those two scenarios, but anyway, without any further ado, let's get into the run. So, we start off here in our hometown of Oakvale. It is our sister's birthday. Um, unfortunately, though, we forgot to get her a present. But thankfully, our dad is a good chap, and he will help us out if we perform good deeds around Oakvale. He'll give us a gold, gold, gold piece for every single one that we do. So, our first good deed here is beating up this bully who's harassing this kid, who will give us a teddy bear. And we will then take this teddy bear to a girl who is looking for said teddy bear. It's going to be right up this hill here. Um, this whole section right here is basically just the game's introduction to its morality system. Pretty simple, binary, do good deeds, good, do bad deeds. Speaking of bad deeds, um, we are now going to be performing our first bad deed of the run. <laughs> there will be more. Uh, by accepting a bribe from that man who is having an affair. And he's paying us a gold piece to keep quiet about it. Yep. Which will now uh, alert the town guards to um, our presence. And if they happen to catch us, they, uh, they are not going to. But they would have given us like a three or so second bit of dialogue that I would have to have skipped. So, we've now given our sister her present, and suddenly, the town is raided by bandits. So, while our family is nowhere to be found except for our dad, who we're going to be seeing in just a quick second here, dead on the ground, um, we don't... our family is missing or presumed dead. But thankfully, we were hidden behind a fence. Yes, I'm serious. The bandits did not see us behind be a very, very easy to see it's through fence. <laughs> but anyway. Will be taken if you continue to we were rescued by a bloke named Maze, who is totally not a traitor, who has taken us to a convenient local academy to learn the ways of combat and heroism. That girl that I just punched, uh, that was Whisper. Um, the reason I punched her is because it's part of a setup here in the Guild of Heroes that is going to be skipping um, a little bit of a test, and that skip actually saves a minute, but I'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, just keep in mind that um, aggressive actions are not tolerated in the Guild, and um, you know if I commit four of them, I would be sent up to Maze, the fellow who rescued me, his tower, for a lecture, which would waste time. Just bear that in mind. 
So the Guildmaster there, he wants to see our uh, combat potential. So he had us punch a dummy first. Then he gave us a stick, which proved a little bit more effective. And now we are going to really put our skills to the test here by killing some beetles that are infesting the guildwoods. Now, the beetles can be a little bit weird sometimes because um, they like to fly around and they can easily dodge your swings sometimes. They also like to bug out the soft target system sometimes too. But thankfully, it looks like we do not need to worry about that. Well done, lad. The beetles are all dead. You can come out of the woods now. Also, earlier I grabbed um, a whole bunch of books. There's going to be like a lot of setup early game for the mid run Get out of bed, lazy bone. to then have the late game be as fast as possible. And so you're going to see quite a few deviations from the any percent run if that's the run that you're familiar with seeing if you've ever seen speed runs of this game before. Any percent would likely have been the one that you've uh, seen in the past. You can put that old. So after a bit of a time skip, we are now um, essentially teenagers, and we can begin training with real weapons. And we attention. have a combat partner in Whisper. And the Guildmaster has instructed us to attack her, and now we are blocking her. Well done. Now we're going to be having a little uh, no-holds-barred duel. And she was... Her, her AI was pretty okay. Not the, not the most ideal, but we'll take it. And now we're going to learn how to use a bell. Thusly. Now, the Guildmaster wants us to hit those dummies while they're moving. Unfortunately... Um, we don't want to deal with moving targets, so we're just going to shoot him, I kid. The reason I shot him was to, um, skip that test. Because, for some reason, if you have a test timer going, instead of being sent up to Maze's Tower for committing aggressive actions, um, you're just, for some reason, allowed to progress, and you completely skip the entire test. And that combined saves, like, a minute and a half, which is pretty nice. Very good. So here I'm going to not not progress on to graduation ceremonies. I'm instead going to go over here to perform a quest that can be missed. So we don't want to do that. It's very easy to miss. For anybody wondering um, why I'm not going to grab the cooking apples or... Um, killing all the sparrows, or um, doing the foot race to the demon door and back, that is because those are not technically quests, according to the game. We did it! So, the original premise of that whole thing was we're supposed to be go playing in Whisper to go hunt beetles. Um, but it turns out that there were bandits on the other side of the, the, the stream there. So, we had to dispatch them. Want to melee combat? Before you graduate. Anyway, we now have a, another time skip here. And we are now the ripe young age of 18. And our final exam, with Maze here, is to hit him seven times with our sword, arrows, and lightning. Pretty simple stuff. Come on. Not too much to talk about here. His, uh, the way he teleports to, like, the locations and stuff, that's pretty random. Um, that second teleport is based on a timer there. I say second teleport, but that unprompted, like, teleport, not at the beginning of the phase, was based on a timer. And, um, 
basically, if you're lucky enough to have him basically teleport right behind you and have his back exposed to you, uh, you can combo him in the back repeatedly, and you can potentially skip that in extra teleport. But that's really based on luck. Ah, now to notice your experience pools going down. And we're going to be performing our first glitch in the run. With experience first. There is little else for me to to double buy the spell uh, called Assassin Rush. Which is a very useful spell. Um, we're primarily going to be using it to teleport ourselves forward a short distance. But um Remember, it also grants invincibility frames, and it will also attempt to zip us behind any target um, that it may be in the path of. And now we are going to perform our very first quest, which is killing a Wasp Queen and her spawn. Using a little bit of target cycling there to quickly dispose of the smaller wasps. And that's a pretty easy quest, all things considered. <clears throat> Attack the wasp queen again. Remember, you the game doesn't really throw too much at you all at once. Okay, with our first quest now completed, uh, we will be going. We're going to be going to our first town of Bowerstone South. And we're going to be doing a little bit of economy breaking there because. Um, Traders in this game essentially work on a supply and demand sort of algorithm with their prices. Unfortunately, though, it's incorrectly applied to um, large stacks of any items that you are trading with. So you'll see what I mean. First, though, we're going to give him some gold so he'll like us a bit more first. We're going to sell our health potions and resurrection files. We're going to be buying apple pies and grain sacks now. We're then going to be selling them back to him for a profit. We're going to be buying will potions, repeating the purchase of apple pies and grain sacks again. And now we have a whole lot more gold than we did when we first entered town. Now we're going to be performing another glitch here. This glitch is called Atom Mode. This is specifically version 3. It's the one most people will be familiar with. And we're going to be using that to essentially buffer a load transition and stop um, various scripts temporarily in order to reposition that guard so we can move past him. The reason we want to reposition him is because he has a proximity-based cutscene trigger that prevents you from entering the northern part of town, which is supposed to be, like, essentially the midpoint of the game. Um, is uh, You only are normally able to access it after completing the arena, which, again, is like the halfway point of the game. And the reason it's so coveted is because up here, in this part of town, you can buy the strongest melee weapon in the game. The Solus Greatsword. As well as a few other things which we're going to be uh, making full use of. We're going to give him gold now. Now we're going to be doing the same thing that we did earlier with apple pies and grain sacks, but with a more expensive item in perfumes. Then we are going to be moving on to diamonds, and now we are going to be watching the upper right-hand corner of the window here. And watch this gold, like, go up by a lot. Really quickly.
We're also going to be buying a bunch of things, a bunch of books. We're going to be buying some red meat specifically so we can become obese to open a demon door later. We're going to be buying an obsidian katana, solace great sword, and a master longbow. And that should do it. Uh, the reason I bought those red meats and I also bought the uh, perfume are for opening demon doors later on. One of them I need to give a gift to, the other one I need to become obese for. Demon doors are essentially riddlers. You solve their riddle, you open them, you gain whatever they have hidden within inside of them, within their stone doors. Now we are fishing. Carefully. <laughs> Hopefully we're going to be getting at least a 30 gram fish here. Ooh, nice, an 80 gram fish. We take those. So the reason I wanted um, to fish here is because this area... Um, okay, let me talk about fishing really quick. Every area in the game has a fishing... a fish weight multiplier attached to it. Um, areas like Bowerstone South and Lower are all a multiplier of one. North of that, however, is a multiplier of two. So it's easiest to fish there for a heavier fish than it is anywhere else right now. And we're going to be playing card, card pairs really quick here. So, three ace, two jack, three queen, three queen, six ten, six. There we go. Uh, I think that minigame is pretty self explanatory, really. Okay, so we just met with Maze there. Um, he told us that there may have been a survivor of our family within the uh, that bandit raid. Our sister may have actually survived. That would be a local fire department. Please don't pay it much mind going on in the background. But, um, yes, our sister may have survived the bandit raid. Unfortunately, he doesn't know much more than that, but he wanted to let us know about it anyway. And now, since it is nighttime here in Bowerstone Key, yes, it is pronounced Key. I pronounced it quite my whole life, but it is in fact pronounced Key. Um, we can take part in uh, the Fist Fighters Club. There's going to be uh, three more of these guys, three more sets of these guys in uh, other places. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, really. We're just going to be fighting a few guys for some gold, and also in order to take part in higher ranked punch club circles, as it were. Gonna knock him down, so I can just continuously hit him in the back. Oh, did I grab that silver key earlier? I did. Wait, did I? I did. Okay. Good. <laughs> And that was just grabbing a quest to finish a fair bit later on. But we just want to grab that now, so so it's easier to handle later on. That was Briar Rose that we just met here. Uh, we'll be seeing her a little bit later, too. For now, though, uh, we are moving on to our next quest, um, which is going to be Protecting Orchard Farm. Hey. 
It might have helped if I equipped that obsidian katana that I bought earlier. And we're also going to be taking a couple of detours. So that woman I met with in Bowerstone South, she has a bit of a, um, a sick child case on her hands. Only he's not really sick. He just found some strange mushrooms and now he's high from them. And um, there's a witch in the Bowerstone Key who can make a cure for being high, but um, he's... Yeah, she, she, she says she needs four of the mushrooms in order to make it. So... We need to go about our adventures in Albion and collect four blue mushrooms on our way. And that lady who I just killed was one of them. Now, um, the game would say, Shay, the game would say that uh, it wants you to make her laugh. Now, um, I'm really weird about jokes. I'm terrible with setups. I like to just go straight for the punchline and hope that it works. So, you know. Horrible joke aside, that is, killing her is simply faster than making her laugh like three times and watching cutscenes in order to actually get the mushrooms. Saves a lot of movement and just time in general. I say a lot, but it's probably just like 30 seconds. So, um, this quest right here is a bronze quest. It's called Fishing Lessons. Um, it's, it's also missable. Like, if you um, leave this area prematurely in the Lost Chapters, it will disappear forever. Because it gets replaced by fishing competition as soon as you leave. So we need to make sure that we get that Golden Fish trophy and complete that fishing lessons quest before leaving and then coming back for a fishing competition which we will be winning with our 80 gram fish Good to see you again, my young. because oh, you're back out, yeah? um, the reason we need to uh, take part in this fish be prized. is the fact that we are going to get a silver key out of it for the uh, second prize and also we have this new fancy rod which makes fishing a whole lot easier. Um, so to touch on fishing just a little bit before we get too much further, um, as you can see, it's kind of an evil version of red light, green light. Um, but um, if you are mashing too quickly, um, Sometimes with heavier fish and weaker lines, you can actually completely snap your line, um, like, really quickly. So it's not exactly guaranteed that you won't get, um, stronger line every time, but it's much more likely. And the Rod of Champions also relieves tension from clicking when the fish is pulling on the, uh, the line a lot faster than a normal fishing rod will. And so, since we have five silver keys now, we were op able to open that silver key chest and get an elixir of life. And we're going to be drinking four of those, I th I'm pretty sure it's four, in order to increase our health bar. Um, independent of the uh, health experience upgrade. And the same thing with five Willmaster's elixirs for our mana bar. Also independent of the magic power experience upgrades. All oh, right. Um, one of the things that 100% does also is maxing out experience upgrades, including health and mana from such elixirs. So now here we are at Protect Orchard Farm. We are defending the farm from three separate waves of three bandits each. And we are going to be zapping our guard friends here to keep that number nine you see there. That is our combat multiplier from dropping any lower. And the combat multiplier is important because that multiplies all of the experience that we gain. Which is pretty important. 
And I picked up a couple of special potions earlier, so, called Ages of Potions. Now those potions will grant a thousand experience in whatever school they happen to be in, so I drank one that was will, so I gained like 12,000 will experience. I drank a might one, which gave me 12,000 might experience because my combat multiplier was out of 12 at the time of consuming them. So, um, thanks, thanks to having a Master Longbow, which is the second strongest type of longbow in the game, um, we were able to quickly dispatch the bandits and deal with Whisper, who does not know how to block arrows yet. She will later, though. But for now, yeah, no, she doesn't know how to block them. And now I'm going to make a save really quick-ish. And instead of going back to the guild, as the game would suggest, we are going to instead progress just a little bit further to unlock a Cullis Gate, which is essentially a little teleporter pad that a few areas have in order to save from going back through all of that same bunch of areas that we came through to get to Orchard Farm in the first place. We also need to kill that boss bandit for a bronze quest here, Bandit Toll. Um, pretty simple, really. That's also why I zapped that very first bandit that we saw there. Skip his, uh, dialogue and skip needing to pay a fee to, uh, cross through the area. Now we are going to be going back to the guild after I set my hotbar up just a bit here. Because I'm going to be learning some spells, and those spells are going to be occupying my hotbar as soon as I exit the menu of learning them. Uh, physique allows you to do more damage in meta. Uh, speed makes you quicker, and accuracy allows you to cause more damage in ranged combat, and make your magic power increases your capacity for storing mana. We're going to perform that hot shot glitch again to double by force push and double by assassin rush. Okay, and now we're going to pull, rearrange our spells just a little bit here. So that they're more comfortable for me. <clears throat> Now we're going to be going back here. Okay, and um, so let's talk about some of these spells that I bought. That one that I used there to kill that bandit earlier back there was uh, Summon. Uh, summon is going to be important because we're going to be using it to... Um, gain a bunch of experience really quickly in the arena as it is a very low cost spell and it has vir virtually no cooldown and it gives three will experience every single time you use it so you can imagine at a pretty high combat multiplier that can be a lot of experience gained really quickly um we're also going to be using it to uh clip into a few places oh i was hoping that would kill him okay I would have skipped this dialogue and needing to choose to let him follow you, follow me, but it's okay. <clears throat> um, yes, this is Trader Escort, a quest that I think is pretty well known amongst players as a uh, pretty, if not challenging, then somewhat scary one. Because Darkwood is a bit of a scary place, admittedly. 
There are Balverines here. There are also a bunch of bandits all over the place here. You'll be hearing them scream a little bit, I'm sure. Or not. Interesting. Okay. Um, the reason I actually kind of wanted to kill this guy here earlier was because he was bitten by one of those Balverines, which are kind of Lycan-esque, almost werewolves, but not technically werewolves, creatures. Um, gonna just munch on this red meat really quickly. And I wanted to kill both of those traitors because it's faster to just have one following you again after having a little dialogue of, hey, what's up? How's it going? How's the wife? How's the kids? So they basically have a little conversation there as they're uh, healing up, talking to the other traitors. Oh, I forgot a silver key back there, actually. Oops. I just completely autopiloted past it. Um, that could be bad. Do I want to start over? No, I don't want to start over. I'll just go back. The 100% run is a pretty long checklist of things. So it's kind of understandable that, you know, even the most well studied of runners might forget a couple of things here and there. I'm not exactly the most well-studied of runners, I just so happen to prefer to run without notes. Okay, so now with that little uh, backtrack out of the way, we can continue on through the rest of this quest. Um, let's see. Not too much else to really talk about with this quest in particular. Um, it's mostly just more of what's already been happening. Just progressing through each screen, making sure that the traitor is actually alive. Uh, the game actually doesn't care like which traitor is make it out alive or not so long as all of the traitors that are alive, in fact, make it out alive at the end of it. Even if it's the infected one that um, I wanted to kill in the very beginning. And not the original two. And you actually can get him out. Not too many people know about that. But, um, yes, this is the demon door that wanted us to be obese. And you might think, well, we don't exactly look that obese. Well, our gut is actually pretty big. It's a very weird... Um, very weird body system <laughs> here in this game. Fat goes... All the fat just goes straight to the gut. Ah... Quickly. Can't quite tell right now because of the uh, direct angle of uh, the hero's back, but um, anyway. So, stealing that, um, <laughs> stealing that blue mushroom off the table is uh, actually, it's faster, first of all, but second of all, it's also way cheaper, obviously, because you're not paying 1,500 gold for it. And yes, 1,500 gold. You would spend more uh, paying for the mushroom outright than you would for uh, paying the fine for stealing it, which is very weird, but I digress. So here we are back in our hometown of Oakvale. It's been pretty much renovated after the uh, bandit raid all those years ago. 
wanted to buy some potions from the trader there, as well as a book, and steal a book from that house up there. We're going to be also using that bed really quick and quickly leaving the house so we do not get a fine for trespassing. Um, now we're going to be playing another pub game, one of the more annoying ones called Coin Golf, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, for each of these, the reason we are playing them is to get these hero dolls for the Bowerstone South School, because uh, the children Over here. want the dolls, and um, Over here. yeah, the only way to procure these Over dolls here. is to um, fulfill or win these pub games Over here, here. So the under um, certain winning conditions. Over so, like, um, for this particular pub game we need to have um need to win with uh 11 strokes or less uh for card pairs earlier we needed to win in under 25 seconds or 25 seconds or less i should say um <clears throat> yeah there's there's just going to be some criteria there And so, uh, we met with Maze there, uh, while we're fighting these guys here. Oh my goodness. It just Little Max super armored through me. Very rude. Anyway, Maze, uh, said that, uh, there's a blind Cirrus who lives among Twin Blades uh, Bandit Clan, who might be able to tell us where our sister is. So, that is going to be our next main quest objective. But first, obviously, we're going to be um, beating these guys up. If, assuming they stop super armoring on me. Oh, drat. Okay, after we beat these guys up, we're going to be stealing another book from another house. And then we're going to be meeting with a ghost pirate, who uh, whose wife doesn't know that he was a pirate. For some reason. Somehow. It's... it's... I don't know. I don't know. She, she somehow didn't know. But, um... Anyway, she, uh... He was lost at sea. He died at sea. And his wife doesn't know that, and she's just pining, waiting for him to return. So, in order to alleviate this ghost's torment, we are asked to um, go dig up some wife that he left for his wife, some wife, some gold that he left for his wife on the other beach here in Oakvale. But um, yeah, and then give it to her. But oddly enough, we can just go to the area up here where the quest would actually complete, dig up what's over here, and just complete the quest without even bothering with his wife. Which saves, um, oh, about a minute or so of, of movement and digging and cutscene skipping and all those wonderful other things. So with that quest done now, according to the game, <laughs> Um, we can, this fellow can now reopen his chicken kicking competition, which we are going to uh, participate in. And we are now looking for a score of 150. At least. It can be over 150, but um, not too much higher. Yeah, 175 is comfortable. And for that, we get a silver key. And 
now we return to the guild to pick up the next quest card. And we are going to stop at the guild shop for more potions. And then we are going to take another quick little detour over to the guild woods. As there is a uh, silver key that needs fished up there. As well as a blue mushroom from another... Um, poor unsuspecting fellow. Um, so, he's been hit with Cupid's arrow, but, um, we're not going to hit him with Stupid's arrow. Because I am romantically inept. And I'm not feeling like playing Messenger Boy. Um, I, yeah, he, he would ask you to deliver a love letter to this girl, Myra, in Oakvale. And then she would have one of her own to give to him. And then there's also options that you can take to be evil about it. You can pass off this letter with poetry off as your own. And I don't think anything really comes of it, other than you, him just being really mad at you and just being like, oh, really disappointed and sad. But, um, yeah, that is something you can do if you want to. But if you're after just the blue mushroom, again, much like the woman in the picnic area, it's fastest just to kill him. And now we're going to fish up another blue mushroom here. That was dropped in here when uh, a couple of traders were visiting the guild and were scared by this demon door sneezing. Because they were high. And doors can talk. <laughs> okay. And that demon door um, was like... Uh... Your path is dark. Only a light will reveal it. Uh, only a light will uh, reveal it, and uh, you're not bright enough. And I never once thought this myself, but apparently a lot of people thought that you needed to be, like, morally good in order to open that demon door. No, you just need to turn on your light. Turn your lamp on. <laughs> Easy. He, he, he meant it in a very literal sense. Speaking of lamp, let's go ahead and turn it off because that will actually give my position away to these guys that I'm supposed to be sneaking past. I say sneaking past, but I'm going to be killing them. No need to sneak past them if they're dead, right? Pretty forehead maneuver, but hey, it works and it's fast. And now we need to open up five chests in this area in order to get some bandit armor. Um, anyone from watching who's may possibly have seen an any percent run would probably know or may know that um, we don't even bother with this normally because we have a uh, summon spell which would let us clip through the gates that we need this bandit armor to open in the first place. But alas, um, we will actually be needing this armor later to open the demon door that is in this very area. Along with two other sets of armor that we'll be getting um, after the arena. A good, good while after the arena, actually, so it's going to be a, a fair bit later on in the run. Um, this big red angry spell that I've been using is called Berserk. I didn't touch on it earlier, and I should have. Um, it basically buffs my physical damage output by a crap ton. And, um... <sighs> I didn't mean to drink that. I didn't mean to drink that. Oh no, that's okay. I didn't want to drink that. I didn't realize I put it on four. Oh well. Okay, that's fine. 
That one's hardly the worst one to waste. To the right place. Okay, um... I'm gonna be buying this guy's books, and we're gonna be buying Crunchy Chicks especially. Now, those Crunchy Chicks, um... Foods in this game have, uh, some amount of benefit to them. Um... Like, red meat gives you a bunch of, um, uh, it gives you some strength experience, um, stone fruit head, stone fruit head, uh, sword. We're just playing spot the addition here. Uh, shrimp pot headstone, shrimp pot headstone, shrimp pot headstone. You won the round. Um, head boot stone fish bug, head boot stone fish bug, head boot stone fish bug. You won the round. Uh, head, fruit, tree, boot, sword, hob. Head, fruit, tree, boot, sword, hob. You won the round. Um, head, bug, book. Sword, pot, shroom, boot. Head, bug, book. You won. And perhaps you'll come okay. and play some more. Oh dear. Oh dear. Come on. Let me go. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I need to sleep really quick. Okay, so, um, as I was saying, foods in this game all have uh, different benefits assigned to them. Um, the one for Crunchy Chicks is um, increases... It gives you evil points, basically. And we're going to be using those to open another demon door later on. Well done. The gate is open. You can go to the <laughs> Um, that blue outline spell um, that I was using earlier, that's called Physical Shield. Um, that essentially makes damage be taken out of my mana bar instead of my health bar, and it also prevents my combat multiplier from uh, taking a hit when I am damaged. So Twinblade's gimmick here is he's basically not invulnerable until, um, so many things. yeah, he jams his swords into the ground. After that, he takes a lot more damage. <clears throat> okay, and it turns out that that Cirrus was, in fact, our sister all along. So, how about that? Our sister is alive and well. You have reached familiar status. Well, mostly well. Her eyes were cut out by the main antagonist. But the maze has more news for you at the guild. I suggest you return here at once. Who will be meeting, um, unfortunately, way later, and in, in a skipped cutscene, mind you. Now, I've got a bandit friend following me here. And he's going to be helping me out here. Instead of taking, like, several punches to knock these guys out and win. It'll instead take him, like, two sword swings to win the fight. And, yes, the game is completely okay with this. So long as they don't get killed, like, during these cutscenes here. Because that can break the event. But if that doesn't happen, it's all good. <clears throat> And so, with all that done, um, we are now going back to the guild, because our friend Maze, who is, once again, not a traitor, still totally trustworthy, um, he has a favor to ask of us. He wants us to go find an old friend of his who's gone missing, calls himself the Archaeologist, um, <clears throat> who's last seen out in Witchwood, basically, and yeah, that's what we need to do now. We need to go find him.
because he may have found something that uh, is big enough to put his life in danger. And before we go and grab that, or just go and start that, we needed to grab that book off of me as a shelf there. Need to break that barrel for that book there. Um, also, um, within Twin Blades Camp, there were a couple of Ages potions. Um, one of Will, one of Might. Um, and there was one in the Abandoned Road, which I accidentally used, which was Ages of Skill, but that's okay. That will not be the worst thing. By any means. Sir, sir. The archaeologist is alive. Um. <clears throat> you, I'm sure we can keep him safe. Uh, you should return to the guild now. There's an important quest card waiting for you. It seems not whole blade is in some trouble. Thank you, Maze. I really couldn't have said it any better myself. Um. <laughs> But before we do that, we're going to go straight to Nothole. Well, not exactly straight to Nothole Glade. we got to have a few detours along the way first, um, including that silver key. Um, along with that, we are also going to be doing a little bit of donation fraud. Defrauding the local church. Temple of Avo. Welcome to the Temple of Light. And we're going to be defrauding it by offering up a really huge donation and then essentially charging it back, but still reaping the, uh, the incentive, the reward incentive for having donated such a large sum of money. The gods. Please be generous. Which is a legendary weapon, and it's actually pretty strong. Unfortunately, it's not exactly stronger than our current weapon, the Solus Greatsword. So we will not be using it for anything in the run. Um, we'll be back in that screen later, though, because there is something else that we need to do there. But we cannot do it yet. <coughs> There's a silver key right over here next to this gargoyle statue. see. Um, there was another spell I got earlier. It's called Multi-Strike. It essentially applies a little effect to your weapon that um, it basically makes you deal damage multiple times with a single weapon swing to a single target. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then there was also Force Push, which is also, I think, pretty self-explanatory. You just emanate a force from within yourself and then push um, applicable targets within the radius, and it doesn't discriminate friendlies or hostiles, so it, you do kind of need to be careful with it sometimes. Although we do use that to um, our benefit, as we did earlier, um, by triggering a cutscene, um, by using force push at the bottom of Maze's tower in order to instantly just get plunked up to him. Save some annoying movement because his uh, staircase is a spiral. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and use those potions now, and we are then going to go back to the guild and pick up the next quest card for um, the quest card that Maze alluded to earlier. As well as three others. <clears throat> So, we're going to be killing a white Balverine, which is a pretty big deal. Um, these Balverines that we've been seeing, these are these are these are normal Balverines. There's not too much to really say about them, um, except they they are pretty tough creatures. They've got a lot of health. They do a fair bit of damage too, if you let them, and. Um, yeah, Witchwood is kind of full of these things. But these ones in particular follow a white Balverine, which is kind of a big deal. 
These things are uber tough. And what the game is basically trying to emphasize here is that no normal weapons can really hurt this thing. You need a special kind of weapon. But, um, yeah. For the sake of, like, the actual game, like, progressing, though, it's just hit counters. And force push, thankfully, counts as two hits for some reason. And I'm hitting him when he goes into these areas just to skip his howl animation. And I'm also hitting him with uh, multi-strike to keep my combat multiplier up a little bit. Okay. But yes, we need silver weapons in order to properly damage um, Belverines, and white Belverines especially, because white Belverines take like six times extra damage from silver augmented weapons, which is really nutty. Um, and that's per augmentation on it, so if there are, uh, say, two silver augmentations, white Belverines will take 36 times damage from that weapon. Which is just ludicrous. Okay, so now we're going to utilize the fact that um, there's a little bit of a arrow drop, so you need to adjust your aim a little bit to compensate for that. We're going to be dealing a thousand damage with that first shot to so that Bal white Balverine. We're going to kill that one. We're going to hit the white Balverine once again for roughly another thousand. And then one final shot to kill it. We're going to be collecting this experience really quick, and then we're going to be warping back to Mount Whole Glade to turn the quest in. done, we need to um, play yet another pub game. We're going to be sorting cards in value of lowest to highest, with aces being a value of one. And these, these red face cards are a little bit hard for me to see with this contrast, and it's actually kind of distracting for that reason. Okay. One flub. It's not that bad. Okay, and then before we leave, we are also going to be committing the cardinal sin of murder. And stealing that book. Um, now, there is a reason that I committed the cardinal sin of murder. Um, <laughs> it's because um, that is a particularly heinous crime, and... The cards will not take kindly to that. In fact, as soon as I return to there, because I will have been away, I won't have been away long enough for the find to have gone away on its own. Um, when I do eventually pay said fine, I will be kicked out of town immediately. Uh, let's see here. Let's upgrade multi strike. There we go. Uh, and then we're going to make a save really quick here on save three. And now we're going to be loading that save that we made after Orchard Farm earlier. 
because we're going to be performing um, edit mode again, but we're going to be using that buffered load zone to essentially turn it into a load warp. Because the buffered load zone will carry over through saves here. Which means if I cancel edit mode while using the save that I made after White Balverine and getting those upgrades, I can come back here with that character. I can come back to Orchard Farm with that character much faster than moving back there manually. And, um, yeah, it's just neat. It's fast. It's cool. And now we can complete this hob killing contest quest, which, which basically requires us to just kill more hobs and whisper. And if I do my job right, she will not be, she'll ideally not be killing any hobs. But uh, only time will tell on that front. Uh, can I fish, please? Thank you. <clears throat> because there is a silver key over here. Okay. Now, an interesting little side effect of Force Push is that it grants combat multiplier against, um... It, 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 when I say it doesn't, when I said it doesn't discriminate against uh, hostiles or friendlies, it also doesn't discriminate um, between um, living or dead targets. So when it deals damage, it also deals damage to corpses for some reason. So um, I can use that to garner a pretty high combat multiplier pretty quickly. which we will be using to uh, a much larger extent afterwards once we're in the arena as well, but um, this will be a good example for the time being. We're also going to be using Force Post to try and keep Whisper pinned down, so it's kind of a icing on the cake, really. Oh, come on. You really don't like helps, do you? Yeah, there's really not a whole lot to talk about with this quest, in all honesty. It's pretty self-explanatory. And what I'm doing is also pretty self-explanatory. Well, I've explained it. Alrighty. 
Now, um, with the combat multiplier 70, we have used our Aegis Potions, the final ones that we will be using. And um, we are now going to go back to the guild and upgrade some things really quick. Oh. oh dear me, that was weird. Okay. Let's go ahead and populate those bots right there. Let's upgrade speed and accuracy just a little bit. Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, we're then going to hotshot glitch that. We are then going to hotshot glitch these as well. And then, yes, that will be good. Quickly drop that there, and then we're going to make our way back to Knothole Glade, because now we are going to finally take part in the arena, the essentially the halfway point of the run. Um in a way. <laughs> so yes, like I said, uh, because murder is especially heinous, the town guards do not tolerate my presence there and will kick me out even if I pay the fine. Which is actually a bit of a time save, because instead of having to go all the way back through that, um, pretty stretched, pretty long road to the exit zone, that, you see that, you can see how that saves time. <laughs> but yes, here we are at the arena. Probably one of the uh, most notable parts of uh, Fable. Welcome to the Hall of Here. I'm pleased to serve you. Gonna be buying potions really quick, buying a silver augmentation, and then we are also going to be buying right plate armor. For that demon door that I was alluding to earlier. Gonna be putting a second silver augmentation in our bow, and now we get to wait for our um, predecessor, predecessing, preceding, preceding pr participant of the arena, Chameleon, to um, get as far as he can. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Alert? Spoiler warning. He only makes it through three rounds before, um, quote, dying like a chicken in front of 5,000 people because that is definitely a uh, number of NPCs that the original Xbox would have been able to handle back in the day. I promise you that. It was a very beefy machine, and uh, 5,000 is chump change. You thought the 1,000 Heartless fight in Kingdom Hearts 2 was awesome? You haven't seen 5,000 people in the arena. There aren't actually 5,000 people in the arena. There doesn't even look like there's 5,000 people. But just for the sake of... Just believe that there's, there's apparently 5,000 people here. Anyway. <laughs> yes, we're going to be doing a lot more force push spamming. Only with a much higher uh, level of force push, so... Um, we're going to be surpassing our highest combat multiplier so far really quickly. We're almost, like, already halfway there. And just give it a few more seconds, and we will already be back at 70. What took us like three minutes before, and now took us like, what, 20 seconds? If not. So yes, at first, there's gonna be like eight rounds, I think, of the arena. Um, I forget the exact number sometimes, it's... Yeah. There's, the first round was Hob, uh, Wasps, rather. This round is Hobbs, who we've seen uh, a few times already. Um, they die really easy. They're especially weak to fire, which is what that spell I'm doing is called in, in Flame. Um, at max level, it's insanely busted. <laughs>
It's like, I heard you like iframes. Well, here's some iframes to go with your, um, your end flames. End frames, if you will. But, um, yes. It deals a lot of damage. And especially to the hobs, because they're weak to fire. They take, like, I think half again as much damage or something. Fire damage. Three, two, yeah, so we we now we're now in the uh, team rounds. So we have Whisper with us now, but uh, well, Whisper is a bit more of a distraction for our enemies than she is helpful, unfortunately. So we kind of want to keep her pinned down as much as possible, much like in the uh, hump killing contest, to be honest. Also, um, yes, we were killing those white Valvarines that quickly compared to that very first one, which took three shots of a thousand each, and those shots took, like, what, four seconds <laughs> to ready? So, that's the power of two silver augmentations versus a uh, white Valvarine. <laughs> She does, Whisper, however, does serve at least one good purpose, and that's the fact that you can talk to her to trigger a quick little dialogue, and you can use that to cancel stage uh, such as in flame, or slow time if we had it. Basically it lets us refresh the timer on those spells, which is really handy to do. Oh my god, Whisper, why? Why would you do this to me? Meanie. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna quickly spam summon really quick. Also, I'm gonna refresh my physical shield. Because I think that may be what has been causing some trouble for me in the past. and whisper there. How'd that happen? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now to test my theory. I think that may have been it, actually. Okay, um, so the reason I wanted to stand in those rotor blades is because one of the properties of Berserk is when you take damage, it, it further increases your physical damage output, um, and standing in the rotor blades, basically in the middle of them, lets you get hit by all of them all at once. So you take, like, a bunch of hits in, like, really short span of time, and that really ramps up your physical damage output. Like, it is absurd how much it ramps it up. And that buff is also applied even if the damage that you take is absorbed by physical shield, so really useful in the arena. Just to get a whole bunch of damage out really quickly. Yeah. 
Now I'm going to be spamming summon for a little bit, just for the uh, will experience that I was mentioning earlier. That's fine. I do, I will need to get some more wheel experience probably for, um, in order to compensate for the lack of skill experience I got leading up to here. Okay, Ragnox wasn't playing ball there for me, but that's okay. I didn't time my Berserk Cycles very optimally either, so that's kind of on me. But yes, Giant Scorpion. Um, now we get to fight Whisper really quick. I do mean really quick. <laughs> now we have the option to kill her here, and that could be a possible donation incentive for a marathon, but... Um, it is like 10 seconds or so slower in order to, you know, to do that. that was because you need to basically stand and let her chuck some grenades at you really quick before she is actually able to be killed. <laughs> um, and that actually brings me to a point that I didn't really touch on with um, Wasp Queen earlier. Some bosses in this game um, have health thresholds that... Um, kind of determine how much damage you can do in a certain span of time. And that's going to come into play um, a few times. A few more times in the run. <clears throat> but, um, yes, there's going to be some enemies that need to perform an, an animation or a series of animations in order to actually become, like, killable. Whisper needing to jump around, or Whisper needing to chuck grenades at you is one of those things. Um, let me reset my Berserk, please. Let me go over here, kill these guys. Uh, yes, this is the Traitor Massacre quest, although it's more like Guard Massacre, because that's the majority of what we're going to be massacring. Um... Rip him up good, hero. Far more guards than traitors, but anyway. Um, yes, it is an optional evil quest that you can take from the guild. And, um, yeah. Pretty self-explanatory, really. <laughs> you can choose to kill the final traitor there or let him go or just let him live and be taken by the bandits. Either option, it doesn't matter. They're both kind of equal in terms of speed. So I just kind of default to killing him. Actually, let me grab this, just in case I need that or later. Um, actually... May as well just use it now. And then there is a silver key in the gray house here. Or silver key chest, rather. I mean, there is actually a silver key here as well, but we're going to be coming back for that later. When we go to open the demon door, which requires us to marry a uh, a particularly, particularly up-class lady. So uh, we'll get to that when the time comes. <clears throat> But until then, we are going to be maxing out our stats here really quick. Increases Hopefully. The damage you can take. Toughness makes you more resistant to damage. Guile increases your stealth and improves your trading skill. Okay. I'm going to be playing with a little bit of, um, stuff there. <laughs> See if we maybe need to store that experience for a little bit later. I doubt we'll need it, though. 
because we have um, a fair bit of will experience for the rest of these things. We're going to be hotshot glitching a few times to max out these evil spells, as well as our good aligned spells, because you need to be um, evil enough or good enough in order to max out spells of... Uh, yeah, and then thankfully though, uh, using Hot Track Glitch allows you to bypass that alignment requirement. So along with essentially double buying it for the cost of the level preceding it, um, yeah, you can just completely skip any alignment requirements that are attached to the spells. Now, um, I want to position some spells here. I want Heal Life there. I want Multi-Arrow here. And I want Slow Time here. Okay. And now we are going to go to Oakvale. <clears throat> and this load screen can sometimes take a while. The game has not crashed, it's just taking a little while to go through the process of loading the area for some reason. It just tends to do that for some reason. One of these days it is actually going to crash on me and I'm going to be very sad. <laughs> okay, we have 65 potions. Uh, we're not going to be teleporting anywhere quite yet. We need to go up here. Back to the back of this house where we met the uh, adulterous man earlier. We're going to be meeting with a guard and his story. Basically, um, he has a brother who is an assassin. And being an assassin is bringing shame to his family. And he um, also is like... The guard friend is jealous also of the fact that he, his brother assassin brother is getting um, inheritance. And, um, yeah, he wants us to go kill his brother for him. It's like a, a double air kind of thing. Because he is sort of a menace to society as an assassin. And he's also, like, getting is in his uh, inheritance out of it as well. Um, Break the Siege is pretty self-explanatory, really. Um, there are a couple of ways you can go about it. The one that I just did is the fastest way, because you only have to kill three bandits instead of a whole, like, entourage of them. Um... You can snipe them from above, you can have them have the guard open the gates to take them all on by yourself. You're either you're a real hero or a real fool. But um yeah, there are a few ways to go about it, which is kinda neat. Anyway, this quest is Lost Trader. This is going to be another escort quest where we will be subverting typical um escort quest traditions. Um because normally you'd wanna be like carefully escorting everybody, right? Now we're just going to be pushing him along, very literally, force pushing him. Because here's the thing with this guy. He will not move if there is any enemy within spitting distance. Like a well-hawked loogie, even. He will not move. And so it's a really annoying quest otherwise. So yeah, force finishing him along and healing him to make sure he doesn't die, of course, is the fastest way to complete that quest. Bar none. <laughs> which, the strategy for the witch, by the way, dates all the way back to um, the oldest... Um, known Fable TLC speedrunner David Arnold's days, when he was originally routing out 100%. So it's pretty interesting to see that that strategy has has stood the test of time as well as it has. <clears throat> 
And yes, this is Trader Rescue. It's pretty self-explanatory, really. Uh, although I'm going at it in a pretty YOLO fashion, because I am basically just killing the big bandit guards that are preventing me from actually interacting with these traders and getting them to move along and follow me. And then I'm just going, going, going. I'm just going. <laughs> We're going as fast as we possibly can right now. So. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that there wouldn't, wasn't going to be any, uh, any bandits on our, uh, trader friends' tails, because, yeah. That final stretch isn't as yellow as the other bits are, and I'm not brave enough to just, um, try and let them follow me, because, yeah, bandits can be annoying and they can kill those guys and it's, it'll fail the quest if that happens and you don't want that to happen because that's a complete loss of time. Anyway, with that out of the way, we are now going to um, visit our guard friend's brother who has made himself rather comfortable in Twinblade's tent. As well, it's not being used by Twinblade anymore. It's, it's free real estate. So, you know... <laughs> Why let it go to waste? <laughs> it's a good little hideout, honestly. Who would think to go here? So we're gonna hit him with an arrow to trigger the cutscene. Um, I need to alt tab really quick because I got an input stuck there. Uh, there we go. <laughs> But yes, uh, you normally wouldn't really be able to approach him, so you kind of need to poke at him with something. He takes his social distancing pretty seriously, but he's also, you know, people are out to get him. Legitimately, so. That's a valid reason to want to keep your distance from people. And with that done... We are now going to um, go to Witchwood Colisgate because in this screen, um, earlier we were told about um, Twinblade is seeking revenge for his humiliated, humiliating defeat and he has hired a band of highly skilled assassins to try and kill me. And this is an area where one such of those assassins can spawn. Um, look at the map here. It's a very specific spawning condition. You have to go all the way into that little cubby hole next to that big rock, which we'll be we'll be seeing again later. But um, yes, that was one such assassin that we will be needing to dispatch. <clears throat> Along the way, though, we are going to quickly eat this golden carrot that we got way earlier in the run in Bowerstone South to turn the time from night to day. Open that silver key chest, sleep in this bed. And you might be wondering, why did you eat a golden carrot to make it day and then immediately sleep? Well, that's because um, sleeping makes it later in the day than it currently was at the time. Um, but if I had actually slept in that bed without eating that golden carrot, it would instead just be the next day. So. <laughs> the reason I need it to be that specific time is because of the final fist fighters that I'm going to be coming up to in just a little bit, and that is also why I got my little guard friend to follow me just a second ago. And I needed to talk to that guy to start the quest to pull the sword, which I have now done. So that will not be a cause for run invalidation in this attempt. Pretty uh, based in poggers, as the kids might say. I don't know if the kids still say that. It's pretty cringe, I think, bro. But anyway. Um, yeah, 
Yes. Um, instead of... Yeah, because of the fact that we have our guard friend following me, um, I'm not teleporting to Not Whole Glade. Because he will not be tele... He, just, he doesn't teleport with you anywhere you go. Which is kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. In a way, though, it kind of works out because crossing that bridge there basically makes an assassin spawn in this cubby hole. So it kind of works out. And yes, um, the final Fist Fighters event is right here. I'm going to come over here to this lamppost, wait for my guard friend to meet me over here. Here he comes. Oh lord, he running. Wait. Gonna tell him to wait now. And then I'm going to talk to the Nothole Glade Chief and commence the Fist Fighters event. And this Fist Fighters event is especially tough because you have very little room for error. On most of these guys, um, you can take a maximum of two hits before you lose, or maximum of two hit, yeah, maximum of two hits before you lose, um, would take a third to lose. And then the further in you go, you only have, like, margin of one punch of error. And that's, like, the case on the final guy. If he punches you twice, then that's, like, rip. You need to wait another day. So yeah, these guys are... This one especially is kind of tough. They also have, like, the most required punches to defeat um, out of all of the fist fighters that we've taken so far. And the final one, the Not Whole Blade Chief, would normally take 50 punches in order to defeat. But that is why we brought our guard friend, because he is going to completely... Um, win our, win our fight for us. In a much faster fashion. Like so. <laughs> Let's see if your skills live up to your reputation! And then, we killed that guy because, um... Yeah, that that is one way that you can win the uh, the archery competition here in Nautil Glade is by uh, just killing him. Remember. Now, granted, in a casual playthrough, I don't recommend doing that because um, that is like the only source of renewable um, Aegis potions. But um, that is that, that is an option available to you if you don't really care about those, and if you know you want to just make your life a little bit easier, <laughs> and you want to be fast. So, um, with no. after visiting the barber shop really quick, um, getting the first hairstyle that we need for um, this fellow Beardy Baldy that we met way 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 earlier in the run here in the key. Um, he has a daughter, and, uh, she has very particular tastes in men, but, um, you know, we are, uh, we're flexible. You know, we, we, we are, we have a very weird way of growing out our hair really quickly. It's really magical, honestly. But, um, yes, we're going to be looking kind of strange for a little bit. Um, the reason I went back to Nothole Glade there and then just immediately warped back to the Power Stone Key was to set up a recall. Um, and now I'm going to be essentially recalling to and from Bowerstone Key into Bowerstone South repeatedly each time I need to um, visit the barbershop here. Which saves a uh, fair bit of time compared to 
manual movement, if you will. Um, sorry. My laps have been dry lately. Um, so, quick look at ourselves. We look a little strange. We look like a farmer is ready to go out to milk the chickens. So, it actually turns out that he doesn't actually have a daughter. He just wants to make heroes like us look stupid. Um, job well done, I guess, but, you know. I kind of like it, though. It is, it is a pretty interesting way to introduce a player to the, um, barbershop. And now we finally get to turn in all of those books that we've been collecting throughout the run. All the way from the guild to here in Bowerstone to those two that we stole in Oakvale, the one we bought in Oakvale, the two that we bought in Twinblades Camp, uh, the one we stole in Nautil Glade, every single one of those books. What was it? And some of the subject matter is the not exactly the most morning. appropriate for school children, but you know, I mean, can any of you tell me? Thanks to this. Yeah. The cutscenes are funny. You have done our school. There once lived a. Some of the cutscenes are actually really cool, though. I mean, if um, in a casual setting, this is actually one of my favorite things of um, content that was added in Lost Chapters. Because this quest didn't exist in the original Fable on um, the original Xbox. Today. Belverines. <clears throat> And so, along with, like, actually reading the contents of the books, which, they're not very expansive, mind you, but some of them, they, they, they are neat bits of lore. Um, you also get these cutscenes, which is just more flavor, and I, I like that. That's really good. Also, some of the cutscenes will change depending on, like, your appearance and things that you've done in the game already. Um... Like, the ugly guide is one of them, like, if you have uh, a particularly high or low attractiveness stat, um, that changes. Um, I know the Tale of Twinblade here, the cut, like, what's said in here changes depending on if you've beaten him yet, if you've spared him, or if you've killed him. Um, yeah, it's just really cool you go, to actually watch these cutscenes. It's honestly a shame that we have to skip them all, <laughs> because uh, they, they, there are a lot of cutscenes and they, they do take quite a bit of time. You, you need to sit through multiple school days <laughs> in order to um, get through them all and actually watch all the cutscenes. So, um, yeah, it turns out that witch, uh, didn't actually need the mushrooms to make a potion to, uh, cure that kid of his highness, um... No, she- turns out she just wanted them for herself. So... You know, that's a thing. But, uh, anyway... <laughs> and that's been taken care of, um... We can now... Finally, get to rescuing the archaeologist right after we talk to a literal conspiracy theorist here. Um, he believes that um, the current mayor of Bowerstone, Lady Grey, um, killed her sister in order to become the mayor. And uh, spoiler warning: he's actually right. She, she, she did in fact do that. Um. And we are being tasked with figuring out how, like, figuring that out for sure, what the deal is there. And, um, yeah, he wants us to go get, um, her ghost, her sister's ghost, to tell us. 
Which, you know, in a fantasy setting, that, uh, that sounds... fair? Ghosts exist, they are a thing. They are legitimately a thing in the game, so, you know, it makes sense. Um, yes, we are quickly grabbing silver keys, a treasure clue out of that treasure chest. Um, I tried to perform a quick little clip there just so I wouldn't have to go all the way around here because I need to kill this Dreadwing minion. And I also need to step onto those stairs in order to spawn this assassin. That was a wasted berserk because there's a cutscene right here. And you cannot be preserved in cutscenes. But that's okay. But yes, um, as the name of this quest would suggest, we are rescuing the archaeologist as he uh, got himself captured by Jack of Blades' minions, the main antagonist of the game, who we met in a skipped cutscene after we had finished the final round of the arena. And we also learned that that is, um, our, our mother, in fact, was a hero. She was also one who completed the arena. So, um, you know, partaking in the arena is something that runs in our family. And, um, we are of a strong lineage. In fact, a royal lineage. We are descendants of um, the ancient Archon. Uh, wait a second. No, we don't grab any quests here. I didn't. I needed to come here to grab potions. Hey, buddy. Okay, 94 potions. That'll last us for a little while. <clears throat> a little bit of dodgy menuing there, but that's okay. Uh-huh. And that was the first, I think that was, like, the first proper demonstration of, um, like, recall mechanic. Well, actually, no, it was... Def actually, it was definitely not the first. Um, but it was another example of the recall mechanic. So basically, um, recalling... Um, when you teleport out of a map, you get a recall point. And that recall point is basically whichever exit you were the nearest when you teleported out of said area. So, um, in an area like Prison Path that has only one exit, I was all the way down at the dock, teleporting out and back to the Prison Path plonked me at that one entrance. Which is pretty handy. Oh, hello. <clears throat> uh. oh. So, um, the archaeologist told us that, um... Okay. To catch up on story a little bit, we met with our sister um, at the Grey House earlier, after massacring all those traitors and guards in Barrow Fields. Um, she told us that um, the fellow we met in the arena, Jack of Blades, was the one who cut out her eyes, and um, he's been keeping our mother, who was also alive, in Bargate Prison, and we need to go rescue her. from this prison. Unfortunately, the only way that we can access um, Bargate Prison, and other than, you know, being um, arrested and taken there, which is apparently not an option for some reason, um, is through an ancient way through Litchfield Graveyard. And that brings us to here. And uh, what we're doing here, in order to access this back entrance, um, we need the help of Nostro. Nostro is a dead guy. But as I kind of alluded to earlier, ghosts are real, and, you know, um, we are seeing literal zombies. Um, Nostro was the gatekeeper, basically. The Old Kingdom gatekeeper. And we basically need his blessing in order to gain access to this back entrance into Bargate Prison through Litchfield Graveyard. And 
we are going to obtain his blessing by recovering his armor for him, which has been stolen by the gravekeeper. Um, because he wants to make a profit off of his effects. His armor, his helmet, his sword, his sword, 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 his, his, his helmet, his armor, his sword, and his shield. Gather for him in the path he shall yield. Um, yes. <laughs> anyway. Um. Ha having done that now, we have access to the old graveyard path. Um, there's going to be a lot more undead popping in and out of popping in and out of the place. Uh, we're going to try and do a clip here to roll up a hillside because hills are a little bit of a suggestion. And, um, yeah. <clears throat> did I? Did I? Okay, I did. I kind of just went on autopilot. Like, I wasn't even entirely sure that I got all three silver keys in Litchfield Graveyard earlier. Okay. But, um, yeah. The path to this entrance uh, now is currently blocked off by this big stone door. And the stone door will only be dropped down upon basically Feeding it, uh, feeding this circle, I guess, um, undead souls. There's, there's this thing. There's a weird thing with Old Kingdom stuff here and undead souls. It's, it's, it's just weird. I'm not even sure if that's entirely the uh, like lore reason right there, but that, that's just my own guess based off of a future quest. <clears throat> so you may have seen um, a really large beast in that pool there. That is a kraken. We'll be seeing him later. Um, in, the, in the meantime, um, we're going to be trying doing a little, another cheeky little clip here. Quick little out of bounds. Saves a little bit of time. And now uh, we need to go up this path here and grab a silver key that is buried in this little fairy circle. Or is it just a face circle? I'm actually not sure. But um, yeah, it's a circle of mushrooms. And soil, and there's a silver key there. And actually, that's a pretty, like, oh, no, you, clever way of indicating that you should probably dig somewhere. Um, as if there's, like, a patch of dirt in a circular form, and there's, like, a circle of, like, either poppies, mushrooms, or, um, like, even stones. Because I did that same thing in Barrow Fields earlier and got a golden carrot. It's not far ahead, but, we must <clears throat> but um, yeah. What the? Yeah. Anyway, we have broken our mother out of prison, and now we are going to get captured by the main antagonist ourselves, and now we are in prison. So. Welcome to Bargate Prison, everyone. Um, we get to sit here for a little while, listen to some dialogue, witness this guard taking a whiz with a sword in his hand. I'm no expert, but that's that doesn't sound very healthy. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, yeah. You should keep all that energy for later. You'll need it then. Oh, and don't try any of that funny will stuff. It won't work in here. The boss made sure of that. In any percent runs, and technically, I should be running this. I should be running this in French too, but I just am obstinate, and I prefer to run 100% runs. Um, 
in English, <laughs> just for the sake of comfort. Like, if I'm going to be doing a longer run anyway, 30, 34 seconds isn't that big of a deal to me. Now, it's, it's, it's a hobby. Speedrunning is a hobby. No. So, let me, I'm, I'm just enjoying my hobby, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But yes, this is the reason why Fable 1 speedruns are typically done in French, is because, you see, um, our cellmate here, or our cell neighbor, is um, doing a whole bunch of talking, and this isn't in the confines of a cutscene, so we can't skip it. However, we can have it be spoken faster in languages other than English. With the fastest being French by 34 seconds. So, you know. <clears throat> that is, uh, that in a nutshell. Look lively, scum. Time to move Excuse out. Excuse me. It's race time, and you'd better put on a good show. Is my chair back Some up because it keeps wanting to sink on me, and it's really annoying. Win, and we like you. Lose, <laughs> and you get around in the torture chamber. Otherwise, though, this is a wonderful place for a bunch of donation reading, because we have um, a bit of waiting, a uh, little bit of movement, not a whole lot to talk about, a stealth mini game, um, waiting again, another bit of movement, another stealth mini game, and then we can finally escape. <laughs> So. It's also a good time, if needed, to step away to, um, you know, use the restroom, grab a quick little drink of water, grab a uh, quick little snack if you're a little hungry, you know, just take a quick little breather. As much as skipping it would be nice. I say it is a nice point in the run to have. Welcome. To if you find yourself in need of that particular sort of break. The cautionary song of the jailbird. Like that 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 the I cannot overstate the cautionary song how much I appreciate having it here sometimes. Well, 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 here we are again, eh? Stay in there, and I'll get to you in a moment. <laughs> you might have noticed there's a few less of you this year. <laughs> I wonder what happened to them, eh? And I say this especially for, um... Oh, or rather, especially as year, a trans woman taking Spronalactone. We gotta get that key. Which is, uh, it's got some diuretic effects to it, so... Yeah, it's kinda... Kinda nice to be able to step away... After a nice long session. But, um... Anyway, not gonna go much further into that. Look lively, Scum! <clears throat> time to move out! It's race Cause that is... And you'd better put bordering on, on TMI. Show. Some of us have bet a lot of money on you! Win, and we like you. Lose, and you get around in the torture chamber. Oh. That sounds fun. Um, yes. er, we sounds do, we, fun. we are growing our hair back, including some facial hair, um, specifically a beard on our chin, aptly called the chin beard, um, which is only obtainable here, um, spending a year in Bargate prison. Um, <clears throat> you can't get it anywhere else. And in TLC, you don't even get to keep it because it gets replaced with the Tramp Beard later on, which is a beard that you actually can get from barbers, and you can find a style card for it. There is no um, style card available normally within the game. You would have to actually mod the game in order to gain access to a Chin Beard style card. So, 
faster, faster! If you're playing the original Xbox exclusive release from 2004, you could keep it for the rest of your playthrough if you wanted to. But not in the case for lost not the case for lost chapters or fable anniversary. Um, unless you mod the game in order to make it so that either the style card for the chin beard is available somewhere or if um, it seems the warden has lost his key. you make it so that the s section of the game where you are forced into having the big bushy tramp beard doesn't give you the tramp beard. But yes, now we are finally able to fully escape Bargate Prison. <clears throat> After we have collected our belongings, as the game will literally not let you leave without them. Oh my goodness, okay. So, um, among the numerous spells that I purchased um, after the arena, um, of which we're not really going to be using very many of them, you've already seen Heal Life, you've seen Slow Time in Use once already, and that basically just does what it says on a tin. It slows down time for everything else around you while you're moving, like, the Flash, basically. <laughs> um... <coughs> And the other one I have on my bar and I just used, and you see those or orbs that are circling around me. Obligatory orb. Um, that is multi-arrow, and multi-arrow is also kind of what it says on a tin. Um, it applies a charge to your bow, basically. Or rather, it applies four charges to your bow. Um, that cause your next four shots to fire a bunch of extra projectiles depending on the level of multi arrow that you have. Which is pretty useful in some situations. We're gonna see a sample of it right here. <laughs> And yes, uh, this, if it wasn't obvious, this boss is another um, one that has those scripted health barriers where they need to perform an animation or a series of animations. In this case, it was another phase of tentacles. Uh, it was just a face phase, ten uh, sorry, tentacle phase, face phase, tentacle phase, face phase. And then that's, that's the fight, basically. <laughs> Honestly, nothing too over the top. There's nothing super complicated about Fable bosses. For the most part, um, in a casual setting. In a speedrunning setting, though, that's a little bit of a different story. In the case of one fight later, because of, like, how specific it is. In order to, um, have it done optimally. But we will cross that bridge when we get to it. <clears throat> In the meantime, now, we're gonna go bounty hunting. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's more of a hostage rescue mission than it is a bounty hunt. Um, yeah, we're, we're, the game really seems to think that you, it seems to be trying to tell you that you should be, like, actually killing all of these guys, but there's really no need for killing all these extra guys. Oh, no, that is a hostage. We do not want to, uh, swing at him. 
I would have had to have hard targeted him in order to have actually hurt him, by the way. So thankfully those random swings in his general direction were not causing any harm to him whatsoever. But yeah, it's, it's still kind of funny. Also, uh, one of the things I didn't touch on about Force Push earlier was that um, you can use it to skip quite a number of animations, including death animations, which can actually speed up some things, um, like quest-related things, along by a fairly decent degree. I mean, it doesn't take too long for some NPCs to die and go through their like death animations, but it's still... Just a little bit faster, just one of those micro-optimization things. Ah, it's um, you. So yeah, <clears throat> we get, yeah, as Isaiah the Farmer here just said, we've helped him before and he has another big favor to ask of us. Uh, it's a personal matter of, uh, well, personal, personal enough. Um, his grandmother was on her way to the farm um, when she was killed by a bandit. And the bandit stole um, her necklace in the process. And now, um, basically, I think in order to put her soul to rest, we need to kill the bandit and recover this necklace. If I'm remembering correctly, I actually have it. This was a quest I didn't even know existed until um, Adam had actually been routing the category. So. The necklace. How can I? I'm a little bit fuzzy on the uh, lore details of this quest specifically, so you'll have to forgive me if I'm incorrect on that. Okay, you don't have to forgive me, but I ask that you do. <laughs> Please don't bully me. <laughs> anyway, um, now we get to move on to the Hob Cave quest. It's another another one of those escort quests um, slash rescue missions. <clears throat> and it's only, I think it's another good example of um, Fable having quite a few choices that you can make. Even, like, even though choices, like, you have available to you seem pretty limited, and they kind of are, in terms of, like, the main story, you, you, you can't make a lot of smaller choices in, like, optional quests and just your interactions with, um, the world. As one of the game's biggest taglines um, before its release was, for every choice, a consequence. It's literally one of the taglines on the box. Um, and yeah, that's... There's, there, it's, it seems like there's not a lot of choice to be made, but there's actually a fair degree of it. Because, like, for this quest specifically, um... We need to rescue this kid, uh, as instructed by his grandmother. He's gone into the Hob Cave looking for treasures, and he's now stuck here. Um, there is also a bandit here. Um, he was coming in here looking for treasure as well. Um, and he's like in a similar situation as um, the old lady's grandson. Um, 
Now we're going to find out in a little bit here that the grandson is supposed to be um, sacrificed for a ritual that a nymph is performing in the focus chamber here. Um, <clears throat> and you have a few options to go about um, securing the grandson's uh, safety. You can either just kill the nymph, which is what I'm going to be doing, or you can take the uh, bandit that's in here and substitute the grandson with him. And um, there's also an option for getting everyone al alive. Um, you uh, would take the bandit with you, you would get the two treasure chests that are only here in the uh, main chamber uh, during this quest. Um, and he would take half of the gold, and you would take the other half, plus the flame augmentation that's in the other chest. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fair little bit of choice, actually. And then there's also, um, even with something like, oh god, um, Beardy Baldy. Um, the Bearded Bald Man in Barrowstone Key. Um, there is an, another way to complete that quest, which is, um, yeah, there's just, there, there's a fair bit of depth to some of these optional quests. Or, I say depth, it's more just, like, there's more choices available to you in some of these optional quests than there are in the main quest, which is kind of funny. But it is what it is. I put weird emphasis on that. Is it is what it is. Anyway. <laughs> Enough rambling about choices in this game. We will now be choosing to kill uh, this Earth Troll here. Like the BAMF that we are, to uh, gain a combat multiplier of 14 or higher in order to open this demon door and be awarded with the Cutlass Plutane. And I need to go back here because I forgot to open a demon door in Greatwood Gorge just before coming here, or just before doing Hob Cave. So we're going to do that now. This is the deal. You perform an act of great evil in my sight, and I'll pop open. And great evil can be done by eating a bunch of live chicks. Crunchy chicks. It's the bones that make them crunchy. So yeah, the implication is basically that they are living chicks. Which is pretty evil. If you ask me. I don't know if that's the intended implication. I think it is. That's my headcanon. But um, yeah, that that's still. You're, you're eating chicks. Baby chicks. Whole oh, baby chicks. You're not even processing them. You're not even turning them into McNuggets. You're just eating them as they are. It's... It's messed up. <laughs> that takes a special kind of psychopathic mind. Okay, so this demon door wants us to uh, wants to challenge us to defeat its guardians. Its guardians, of course, being these hob waves here. <clears throat> and they go down pretty easily, just like they did in the arena earlier.
And in this chest specifically, we are going to be getting the third and final outfit that we will need to open the demon door in the abandoned road. Which we will be opening in about 20? No, maybe not even 20. It's probably more like 10 or... A little more than 10 minutes, I'm, I'm thinking. I, I'm, I, I am thinking. But um, in the meantime, though, <coughs> that would explain why I saved time in Hob Cave. Oh, so the guild thought I need. By the way, um, was I forgot to get the Greywood Gorge demon door opened? That's okay. Um, I did what? Did Briar knock them down? Okay. Anyway, this is a quest that we're doing. We're helping Briar, Briar Rose out, who we met briefly at the guild earlier in the run. Um, <clears throat> we need to kill these minions and protect her while she performs an incantation to keep this thing, a summoner, a really big bad, bad guy, bad monster, bad, bad critter, evil thing. They're bad news. <laughs> From, uh... Yeah, th th there's basically a portal, and she needs to close it to make sure that that thing doesn't make its way here into the mainland. Because they are actually a thing in the northern wastes right now. Unbeknownst to the world. Except for um, a character we'll be meeting later named Scythe who had gone to the Northern Wastes to basically keep things contained up there. <laughs> and yeah, it's a pretty simple quest, all things considered. Pretty direct, pretty straightforward. Um, a little bit less straightforward here. I'm going to be performing a recall setup here. Um, because I'm going to be going into a bit of a, as this bullet name would suggest, into a uh, bit of a dodgy area. Maybe, maybe not the most family friendly thing in the world, but you know. Um, I guess it could be family friendly, if, depending on how you look at it. Because you could be making a family with the uh, thing we will be doing here. But anyway, enough of that. We're just going to be um, spending some money. Um, to do something ten times. And we need to do this specifically 10 times to fulfill a demon door's um, wishes in order to gain its loot. And we are on thing number four. Thing number five. Thing number six. Thing number seven. Thing number eight. Thing number nine. And this should be thing number ten after. <clears throat> We're bumping uglies. There, I said it. Okay. There is a little bit of a time save that you can do by um, getting a proper, properly positioned roll, and you can position, your, position yourself so you can literally roll out that window. But um, I wasn't able to get that first roll like would be necessary, so I just went around the, uh, the old-fashioned way. And now we are going to use that recall setup to leave this area skip the extra two load zones and or, no it is extra two load zones and um 
make our way to um, Ancient Nicola's Gate, which is where we need to be, because that is where we're going to be progressing the main story again. Because you see, after we got our mother out of prison, um, she went off to find our sister. I'm going to go ahead and eat my moonfish here. No, moonfish. And I'm going to eat my golden carrot. So I can buy potions when we get to Nothole Glade, which is where we're going. Right here. Or not not all right. Hook Coast, rather. Sorry. Um, yeah. Any one potions. Should be okay for a while. If not for the rest of the run. We'll see. Now we're going to be playing Shove Hapney. Ooh, weird position, but okay, we'll take it. Cool. You won. But it can perhaps you come back and play some more. You have reached a very famous status. So yeah, Assassin Rush doesn't really like stairs too much. <clears throat> It is not very stair friendly. And that was the final assassin for the Assassin Attacks quest. And for completing that, along with, you know, some renown and gold, um, we are also given a treasure clip. Pleased to serve you. Uh, he restocks in one day. Okay. I think if push come to shove, I can probably buy potions if I need them, like, towards the end of the run. Which is when I'd be wanting to buy them anyway, probably. So, um... Yeah, it turns out that, um... Things aren't really going well right now. There's a barrier in Hokos that shouldn't be there. Um, there is a book specifically on barriers in Maze's Quarters, and our mother was just captured from within Maze's Quarters. Seems kind of sus, but I'm sure Maze is still on our side. I'm sure Maze is on our side. I'm sure he's just as confused about this as we are. I'm sure. He has to be. He, he's, the, he's an upstanding guy. Come on. You don't just rescue a kid and not be an upstanding guy. Alright. So this is a little bit of a detour. But it's not too much of a detour. Okay, so... Oh, how do I begin to explain this? I guess we'll just start with what I'm doing right now. So I'm hiring a mercenary because I'm going to be performing a sacrifice. I'm going to be using him for a sacrifice to the uh, Chapel of Scorm, the antithesis of um, the Temple of Avo. We're not going to be teleporting. We're going to be switching outfits to Dark Bill users because this demon door has three fens. Um, he says, um, has some bad eyesight, apparently. Um, bright plate mail. Um, the brightest plate he's ever seen. Probably what did his eyesight in. Um, because it was so shiny. And, um, an evil mage and a mischievous bandit. So we needed to dress up as a gallant knight, evil mage, and a mischievous bandit in order to reap his reward. And now we're going to be investigating the murder of Amanda Gray. That is her uh, widowed uh, fiancé, Rodri. Um, is that the right term, actually? I'm not entirely sure. Widowed. I'm not sure what constitutes becoming a widow. If the... 
not sure which party actually becomes the widow. I think it I think it's independent. I think it's independent. Either way, um Did I Yeah, let's just remove that. Okay. So yes. It turns out, um Lady Grey locked her sister in the cellar of their home. And the air ran out, and so she ended up um, suffocating to death in here, in the cellar. And that scrawled note is basically her final thoughts before she finally died. And that just says, yes, my, my, my sister is the one who did this to me. Yeah, I think there's a uh, some sort of um, final message to Rodri in there too. But um, yeah, gonna get over to here, and then we're going to quickly go to Bowerstone South because we have a quest to perform in Bowerstone Jail, and you're going to probably laugh if you've never seen this before, um, and if you've done this quest before. Um, you, you, might, you might learn something, um, because they're, th this is actually the fastest quest in the game, with how we do it. Um, so basically the premise of this quest is we're supposed to be helping two guards escort a prisoner to Headsman's Hill for him to be executed. Um, and the guards are like, don't get any funny ideas. The only person who's going to be chopping this guy's head off will be the executioner himself. But, um, funny thing. You can just kill him. And, yeah, you, know, you can kill him yourself and the quest will complete. Because the game apparently only checks to see if he's dead for com the sake of completion. So, you know, you can just kill him and complete the quest. Almost certainly not intended, but, you know, it works. So we do it. And now for our precisely timed um, sacrifice to the Chapel of Scorn. Good, a fresh dawn. The die is cast. The die is cast. I, it's 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 like very, very, very weird voice. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and equip that, because I can. Um, and now we get to go back to the guild, because we're going to pick up another silver quest, Bandits by Extraction, which is a l and, and one of those, one of those escort quests that I actually really don't like. It's still kind of subverting expectations of traditional I have a quest card. escort quest Quick. and stuff, but it's still kind of painful sometimes, because the person we're going to be escorting is, um, he's a deep cover bandit and he's a squishy person besides, so we need to be pretty cautious about how we go about this quest. <clears throat> um, but hopefully it won't be too much of an issue for us because, um, yeah. Is that you, Tanya? No, this is you. My name is Ta My name is Tanya. I'm a deep cover bandit operative. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, this guy is disguised as a traitor. None of these guys here. It's in fact one of the mustachioed guy who's walking up this way right now. Yeah, yeah. What are you up to? Are you here to contact me? I'm not one of these guys. You must be with my gang. Get me out of here. 
Okay. So now that he has that following icon above his head, we can use slow time and book it straight to Bowerstone North. And he will be able to follow us without instant. Just gonna quickly force push everybody in the area because, again, he's squishy and he, uh... Well, it's a little hard for him to take damage if he's knocked down, and it's also hard for him to take damage if any people who could deal damage to him are also knocked down. Other than myself. You know, so. There's that. <clears throat> anyway, that's that quest done. Pretty simple. If a little bit iffy sometimes. You know, depending on how... If you can get him to follow you or not. Um... Adam basically found that it's much more consistent if you let him just finish that dialogue and not actually skip it to, when you talk to him, so then he'll, like, follow you immediately. Ideally, so long as there's, like, no enemies around him. So. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> Now, um, to continue the whole Lady Grey subplot, we are going to be dueling Thunder here. Thunder, by the way, is uh, Whisper's brother. Um, he's like, You can't have her, she's mine. Ah, bah, bah, bah. Toxic masculinity. Some, some bollocks like that. Um, anyway, um... Lady Grey wasn't really interested in Thunder, because um, he's not the only person who can beat the arena without taking a break between rounds. Hi. Um. <laughs> you think you can steal her? And yeah, she 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 was interested in him, but now she doesn't care for him at all. She's pretty petty. Um. Pretty fickle in her affections, if you will. But, um, yeah. He also goes down like a ton of bricks. Whisper chooses her. <clears throat> because of how absurdly overpowered we are. But, um... No, right, I can't use my gold seal, so I can't do that seal rush technique that I've been known to try and do sometimes. And uh, that demon door wanted to uh, see us defeat another hero in combat. In this case, it was Thunder. Even though he, the demon door technically didn't see us defeat him, it's it's it. He he, he got the idea that we beat him anyway. So you know, but that, 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 it, it works. And that means that you do have to do the subplot in order to open that demon door. Um, you don't need to actually go through and marry her. I heard. Day, to open that demon door specifically. However, you do need to marry her in order to open the Grey House demon door. Um, <clears throat> I do have a video um, showcasing how to go about circumventing needing to open that demon door and still get the uh, weapon that's inside of it. But uh, for the sake of 100%, since we do require you to actually open every demon door, yeah, we do not allow killing the demon door and looting their contents. So, yes. Important distinction to be made there. Anyway, um, speaking of that demon door, we are going to be uh, opening it, as well as fishing up another silver key that is right outside of it. Right here. And then afterwards, we are going to be returning to Hook Coast, finally. Because uh, the reason we are doing all of this other stuff before going back to Hook Coast and rescuing and you know, finding out you know, where... Our mother was taken and, you know, getting back to Hook Coast and securing the Septimal Key, which is something that Jack is after to um, activate the Focus Sites in order to access his legendary Sword of Aeons. Um, although he could have just used a Wasp 
and then Assassin Rush to clip underneath the floor of the Chamber of Fate, but he doesn't know that, apparently, so... No internet access. No, no, no ability to watch the oodles of YouTube videos out there <laughs> on the subject. <laughs> so, haha, he lacks critical information. Pepe laugh. Anyway, um, yes, we now are finally returning to Hook Coast to secure the Septimal Key and just make sure Jack cannot activate the focus heights and, you know, get his sword, because that's going to bring about the end of the world if he does, and we don't want the world to end. We like the uh, world as it is. Whole and more or less serene. But, um, yes, that book that we found in Maze's Tower um, is in an archaic language that we cannot decipher. However, the Guildmaster can as he has studied in um, such archaic languages. He is an old, he's a rather studied old man. And, oh, hey, it turns out Maze is a traitor, after all. Who would have thought? Anyway. Won't be able to talk too much about uh, the specifics of this quest, but or this fight, rather. Just know that I am being really specific on timings. <laughs> like, when I'm damaging him, and how I'm knocking him down and setting up for those phase skips that I did. Because I did skip two phases in that fight because of the way I knocked him down and then used Berserk and Multi-Strike to just, like, plow through those phases and for some it's for some reason whenever he's knocked down and standing back up that lets you just some magic happens and you're just able to skip phases because of that i i don't know why it just it just works it just works so i'm not going to be going for the um trick known as jack's hit here because um Unfortunately, I'm not very well versed in it in uh, the last chapters. I'm much better at it in the context of Fable Anniversary because um, I'm more familiar with the visual lineup for that than I am with this one. And yeah, I'm just going for simplicity's sake. I will be going for a similar snipe to Jack's hit here because I'm going to be setting up uh, the final charge of multi-arrow for the Jack-1 fight later on. <clears throat> In fact, the very next quest. Um, which is important because the final charge of multi-arrow deals basically double damage of the other ones. And that will let me one-shot the second phase of the Jack-1 fight. And if I play my cards right, I can perform a frame-perfect trick that will let me essentially charge a shot during a cutscene that plays during the transition from Phase 1 to Phase 2. That trick is called Big Shot, by the way, named after Big Law, who first did that, and it has been called that ever since. It saves a good, like, three or four seconds because of how long you need to charge a shot in order to, like, one-shot him. So instead of actually using that time after the cutscene, you know, if you pull that trick off, you know, that, that, that happens during the cutscene, and yeah, you can just turn around and then release the shot, and then bam, he's dead. <laughs> so we'll see if I can manage to nail that. I managed to do it in a uh, de-rust attempt last night, but uh, we'll see if I can do it again tonight. So I want to focus on the Dreadwing minions here. Like so. Um, 
Oh, okay. I forgot that I was using the Solus Great Sword and not the Sword of Aeons here. <laughs> I completely spaced on it. That's okay. No big deal. Although that could have been that could have gone slightly worse. He could have actually decided to glitch under the floor. Um or just completely disappear, rather, because that's essentially what he can do. Um, if he just rushes like straight into the middle from the middle sometimes. And he kinda glitches the fight out a little bit, and he yeah, it's 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 weird and it's it loses time because you can't actually target him, and it, you have to resort to inflame spam, and that takes a little while. Anyway, don't need to worry about that, because that didn't happen. Instead, we are going to focus on here and now. We are going to be grabbing the final optional quest, Ransom Victim. And then we are going to be doing some more edit mode shenanigans. Because we are going to use it to... Do um, um, yes, we're going to be using Edit Mode to enter the Prophet's Chamber here earlier than we should normally be able to. Um, <laughs> and when we do this, the Ruman is in a, in a very weird state because the quest is like active, kind of, but it's not actually active. And, um, you can finish those, you can finish that first puzzle, but it's actually detrimental if you do, because then you're kind of locked into it, and then you can't actually, like, do anything with it. However, you can, um, flip over some tiles, leave the rest unturned, and then that essentially sets the completion conditions for the puzzle when you actually for the puzzles when you actually re-enter the area. So instead of turning the entire board into suns or moons, you only need to get a certain number of suns and moons in order for it to be counted as a completed puzzle. Trust me, it is very weird. It is very very weird. It is. I I I. I it, when we were first figuring out, like, what was going on, we, we we did not know what was going on when we were, like, first figuring out what was the optimal pacing for that. We, it took us, like, a good hour or so in a Discord call to actually figure out what the heck was actually happening there. And, yeah, we determined that we're actually just setting the number of tiles needed of each type for completion before, you know, actually completing the puzzles by entering that room early and yeah, it's it's weird. Also, my frame rate is really choppy right now and I'm not sure why. Game is having a little bit of a fit right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Let me get let me in there. Okay, we got it. Phew. I didn't have multi-strike applied on that first swing, on, uh, you know, the first and final summoners, but that's okay, because I, oh, I got no skip glitch, that's sad. Uh, so, we, okay, no skip glitch, this is basically, um, what it says on the tin, um, it skips through... It does skip through the dialogue of a cutscene, but the cutscene kind of still tries to play anyway, and it's it's really weird, and it's just unfortunate. It just happens sometimes. Um, there's another fight with scripted animation shenanigans. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. In the 
this case, it was 13 punches after I evaded his um, ice trail um, punch thing. His initial ice trail punch. That really does a number to your, um, your health and or physical shield. If you get uh, struck by it. And it is, it is a multi-hitter, so it, 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 it does a number on you if you are hit by it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Thankfully, we didn't need to worry about that because I evaded it and made him send the Ice Trail attack into the walls, which is... Extra prima good. And now, before I completely forget, I need to make sure I get Archon's Club here. I forgot to get that last night in my attempt, and my run was invalid because of it. Not like it was a PB anyway, but still, for the sake of a valid run, we need to get Oricon's Club. Okay, now, this is another example of recalling and the position stuff. I'm doing all of this, by the way, to skip in one cutscene trigger. <laughs> And this also is, um, it saves like five seconds without loads, but it loses about five seconds in real time compared to just normal movement and actually going through with the cutscene and everything is normal. It's one of those weird little trade-offs. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, so, uh, we beat the big bad Jack of Blades after he killed our mother, um, our sister uh, had gone off to do her own thing somewhere, uh, I guess play Fable 2 to find out what she's doing after this game, um, and, um, yeah, we've made it to the Northern Waste now because, um, yeah, some things are going down up here, and uh, Scythe, uh, the person, the, the hero that uh, left to secure this area, was not able to do so. Um, so he reached out to the guild and was like, hey, we, we need we need help up here. I, I can't do this alone. Um, I, we, we need a strong, stronger person from the guild to help me here. And who's stronger than the person who killed the biggest antagonist the world has ever seen, Jack of Blades. Um, so yeah. That's why I'm here now. <laughs> I get to help secure this area and make sure that those nasty summoners do not go any further into the mainland. Uh, yeah. And right now, um, I'm currently digging up uh, graves to find glyphs in order to awaken the Oracle of Snowspire. These glyphs, by the way, are literally just learning how to do the YMCA. Um, so yeah, that, that, that is something that we are doing right now. And then, um, yeah, about the quest specifically, the graves in this area are essentially shuffled every attempt. This isn't the case in Fable Anniversary on Steam for some reason, the first time you enter. Um, but yeah, it's very weird. And pretty annoying, especially in any percent, because it can cost you, like, an unnecessary 30 seconds if you happen to get bad RNG. But, um, yeah. With that now done, we can go to the Lost Bay and collect our final silver key and open our final silver key chest. Uh, before we give all 30 of our silver keys to a demon door who wants silver keys. Who, by the way, will accept you having zero silver keys if you happen to have zero silver keys. And he'll even have a special line of dialogue for you. 
Well, it deals a deal, I guess, but why do I always have to meet the freaks? How did you make it all this way without finding a single silver key? Only reverse the order of that. Anyway, um, yes. Final reward for the, uh, collection of all those silver keys is this sword called the Avenger. It's really not that good. It, it's actually kind of bad. <laughs> It is really not worth the effort of getting all those silver keys, so if you are, were ever lamenting not getting it back in the day, um, don't feel too bad about it. You weren't really missing much. It's a pretty terrible weapon, and the Bereaver and the PC version, at least, is not much better. On the Xbox version, though, the Bereaver is actually, like, on par with Solus in terms of raw damage output, it's, it, it can actually equal the damage output of it if you apply two sorping augmentations to it. But anyway, enough about that. We have a pub game to hopefully not choke on. This is the final pub game, by the way. One final game of coin golf. Wonderful. I feel pretty good about that. The only real flub that I had um, was, I think, on card sorting. We have uncovered the glyphs, we have now awoken the Oracle of Snowspire, and we have learned that um, Jack of Blades was actually not defeated. Because um, it turns out, um, yeah, it's a little hard to kill a uh, being like Jack who comes from a plane called the Void. Um, than in just, you know, defeating his mortal body. Um, where am I? Bowerstone South. There we go. Um, I'm going to Bowerstone South right now because it is currently night, and it is current, uh, the current time of night is, um, it means that villagers are going to be in the tavern, pretty much. And that is where the teacher, Mr. Gout, will be consistently, so... It's, uh, yeah. Much better than, it's much better to just have him there in his tavern instead of having to go to some randomly chosen house that he happens to live in. And so, um, yeah, in order to defeat Jack of Blades once again, we need to um, open the Bronze Gate, and we need to open the Bronze Gate by feeding it the souls of three heroes. Um, specifically, uh, the King of the Arena, um, a heroine, and an oldest soul. Thunder's soul uh, was one such soul that could classify as a king of the arena. Um, ours would as well, but uh, you know we can't exactly chop our own head off and feed our own soul to the to the Bronze Gate because, or to the Archon Shrine because who would be alive to kill Jack once you know if we're dead? So <clears throat> yeah, the alternative to killing Thunder is something a whole lot slower. It's basically Arena Point 2, or 2.0, rather. Um, which would require, instead of just killing Thunder, who's literally right there, going to the arena and partaking in this, like, mini arena gauntlet of some of the strongest enemies, or toughest enemies, rather, in the game. Like, Trills, Valverines, Minions, Summoners. And yeah, it's just a whole lot slower. And whole it's 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 so much slower than just killing thunder. <laughs> it's 
down. Now, um, I set up a recall to skip a whole bunch of movement on the way to uh, here, which would be cavern. Um, and yeah, we're going to be doing some more slow time shenanigans here. YOLO slow time shenanigans. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> and hopefully everything works out okay. The biggest challenge of this is making sure that um, none of the upcoming enemies will have a chance to aggro onto... Well, they, they are aggroed onto the child, but so that he doesn't feel their aggro, basically. If he gets too close to enemies, he'll stop following me, and that's just really slow, obviously. Because then I'd have to kill said enemies, and then... Yeah, that's why I'm using slow time and just trying to book it to not hold late as fast as I possibly can. Even if it means I do have to force push him on accident, he, even if he is a little bit of collateral damage. And it's okay anyway because the uh, fastest option to complete the quest is taking him to his brother over here who will end up killing him, so. Hey, not yeah, some Albion, Albion's inhabitants have some really, really weird family politics stuff going on. People of Albion are just out for blood. Well, uh oh, wait a minute, wrong strat. <clears throat> I'm not even properly set up for it anyway, so. There we go. Um, excuse me. I thought I applied multi strike. I guess I didn't. <clears throat> So yes, this is the Briar Rose fight. Um, the alternative to her soul is our mother's soul, which is kind of on par in terms of pace. But not really, because you do have a bunch of extra movement to do. If it weren't for the extra movement, it would actually be pretty much like whatever you decide to do. Um, but Briar Rose is still faster because of the extra movement needed to get our mother's soul. And then... <laughs> Unlike um, the evil route that we seem to have been going on... For the old soul, we are going to be going with Nostro's soul instead of the Guildmaster, because... Um, killing the Guildmaster involves watching an unskippable cutscene, and killing Nostro doesn't involve such a thing, and it's just a whole lot faster as a result. Even though we do need to go to the guild to trigger everything here, um, it's still faster to go the Nostra route than it is the uh, Guildmaster route. Also, we need to find this sword that Maze was trying to find because he was actually trying really, really hard to escape uh, Jack's grasp. He wasn't working for him willingly. Um. <clears throat> and he was trying to find Avos here, which is a sword that rivals the Sword of Aeons, basically. Um, unfortunately for Maze, he was not worthy to wield it. So, he was forever stuck in... Jack's grasp, as he uh, noted down in his uh, study there. <clears throat> However, because we sacrificed the power of the Sword of Aeons, we we are able to use it. Although we won't, because the Solus Great Sword is stronger. Um,
And yeah. After doing that, we went back to uh, collect Nostro's soul, and then we have finally opened the bronze gate, and now we can finally vanquish Jack of Blades, who has assumed the form of a dragon. And just like that, he is now dead. And we suck his soul into the soul mask, and we are going to chuck it, and now it was a battle that would be talked The world has been saved. To come. The day the hero of Oakvale slew the dragon Jack of Blades. The day the strange creature behind the mask was finally banished from this world. Um <clears throat> Since I don't have Cheat Engine installed on this PC, um, I'm just going to skip the credits and load the autosave to verify um, validation of the run. <clears throat> um, in here we have uh, Harbinger, Cutlass Blue Tain, Willows, Pickhammer, Dollmaster's Mace, Katana Hiryu, Ronak the Axe, Orcom's Club, The Avenger, Avos Tear, Solus Great Sword, The Sentinus, Murin Great Hammer, Frying Pan with Augmentation Slot, so it's a true Frying Pan, Murin Great Axe, The Bereaver, and Squirm's Bow and Arkans Crossbow. Um, all trophies, including the uh, Fist Fighters trophy and Silver Arrow trophy, as that is not a quest, and that is a um, not gotten from completing a quest, as you can never truly complete the archery competition. Um, uh, inventory, weapons, I need to show off the um, augmentations that I got from the silver key chests, along with that. Um, maximum completed quest would be 54, which would be after defeating Jack of Blades finally as a dragon. So, there's that. Um, experience, all of those have been maxed out. And, um, I have full health and mana bars from the Elixirs of Life and Willmaster's Elixirs. And that is Fable TLC 100%. Um, if you made it this far into the video, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was, uh, insightful, entertaining, um, just good background noise or something. Um, either way, I hope you enjoyed, and again, thank you for watching. And, um, also, for any person in charge of um, selecting games or any marathons. Thank you for considering um, Fable TLC 100%. It's a run that's gotten... Uh, it's gone through quite a bit of change over the years. Um, and that's one I'm pretty... pretty comfortable with. Um, and... Yeah, I don't- I haven't really contributed too much to it myself. Um, the biggest, like, optimization that I think I can have done with it is not using slow time in pub games. I think that probably would be about the biggest, like, personal contribution to the 100% route that I have made. But, um, anyway. Again, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.